All right, so today we are going to be working on a project that is probably pretty stupid, but it'll really look cool in the end once it's all completed. And unfortunately, as you can get with the biome here, we got a pretty terrible biome to manually mine a perimeter out. Um, but yeah, got a, there's a jungle hills biome here partially, uh, which obviously is not very good to manually mine because of all the jungle trees and things like that. Also the little hills over here. Uh, but yeah, I spent the past, I think, three hours or so with help from Rubik, one of our members. Um, we've decimated this whole jungle here. Um, we got about two, I think it's around about two thirds of the total uh, logs so far. And yeah, it's gonna be uh, a bit until we actually get to the bottom and just start mining stuff. Then, then we gotta get leveling with the actual hills down to a certain level. Then that water's gonna get drained out, and then we'll be uh, smooth sailing on from there. Uh, but yeah, really didn't have much choice with this area because it's all added on these guys generating down here. Now I think when I counted this, we have about thirteen or fourteen of them. Which is a pretty decent, not the best, but pretty decent amount of geodes inside of one area here. Um, which I think is going to be more than enough. Because we also need to make a civic farm for each one of those geodes, which will be fun in and of itself. This part here, uh, I think between me and Rubik over here, we've mined probably about 10,000 logs so far. Uh, just for jungle alone, and there also is a bunch of oak in jungles for whatever reason. So that also is there, uh, kind of that total, not kind of that total, probably around 10,000, if I had to guess. But uh, yeah, so it's going to be a long, we're going to be manually minus, like I said, and the whole reason for this specific shape here is this is your random tick range, if you didn't know that. Uh, so the whole perimeter is centered around this chunk right here, so it, this is your random tick range. Uh, I believe it's... 15 chunks from the center, and then you cut off a little bit. So I don't really know what to call the shape here. Uh, not really anything that I know of, uh, but it's still a pretty interesting shape, and I don't think I've seen someone do one of these shape perimeters for random tick, uh, tick ranges. So this would be pretty cool to decorate, not only in the end, uh, but also just to mine out that shape. It's not like a circle or anything like that. It's pretty straightforward. It's like a lot of straight lines, which is really helpful. Uh, when mining on this scale but uh yeah to get that done and yeah, we'll go on from there autocraft archive is officially low it's mainly a collection of all the primitive decorations and it also offers physical merch that is themed around autocraft so if you want to visit it check some things out click link down below and visit the website
right, so we just finished the uh, dig out completely here. It is all down to the bedrock layer here. Of course, we are still in 17, so it's not too bad of a ways. Uh, but it was still around 50 some thousand, I think it was like 55,000 blocks a layer. Uh, which is still pretty decent amount because it's pretty close to a perimeter scale. Um, but obviously, you have a couple corners cut off a little bit because this is only 242 from side to side on these two sides here. Um, so it's not as big as a perimeter, but I think it still gets pretty close to the volume of one. And of course, being in a jungle hills biome did not help at all because, as you see, the top part over here uh, goes pretty close to Y100. Of course, it's only not it's not that high or that much as that high, kind of just on the outsides. But for the most part, our average height was a little bit above sea level, so I would say right around there, which is probably around uh, like 70 or 80 around Y80. So 80 layers on average is you know. A few million blocks, uh, just on average, you know, brain height and, uh, you know, total volume of this thing. Pretty decent. Uh, took a little bit, but we got it all done. And now, as you can see, we're starting to work on the farms as well as the decoration. So we have four of the farms built up, but this one just needs one more uh, slight oversight with the Rubik when he did set up the farms here. This one does extend into the wall, so we're just basically just going to redo and redoing it a little bit and uh, putting the flying machine on this side instead of this side that way it'll just bounce off this wall right here and go back that way we have nothing uh, interfering with the decoration or things like that so yeah not as many geos as i thought it was it's still you know 10 geos which is still a pretty decent amount uh, i didn't use a finder or anything like that so just randomly coming across this is pretty decent um but yeah which I thought there was 14, but there is only 10. And then this one is a very, very small one. That one's also a small one there, but then we have some massive ones uh, like this one and this one that kind of make up for that. Uh, yeah, so basically what I'm doing here is I see a bunch of people either encasing these things fully in obsidian or barrels or moss or whatever they do. Uh, I don't really like the look of that personally because this is a big box of either obsidian or that, so it's just a constant color. I'm trying to blend it in with the decoration as much as I can, which is why I am doing Crying Obsidian and Purple Stained Glass. So we only are using the Crying Obsidian in the places where the flying machines either touch, that way we don't need to have the full thing with immovable blocks. If we still use glass here, for example, we are still able to look into the farm, which I do enjoy compared to, you know, having to either use free cam or go mine a block and then get inside the farm yourself. But obviously the main goal from all the way up here, which will probably be our AFK spot in storage, uh, we can look out and we can see inside of the farms without needing anything. Obviously that one's going to be closed up a little bit. But yeah, you can still see in the farms and see the geodes and everything like that. So we will also have another thing I made uh, that will, you know, just give us a little display up here of the state of all the farming. We'll have them all harvest at the same time, that way it's easy to follow and that way we don't unload anything while it's harvesting. But we'll get to that once we get to that a little later down the line. Hopefully we get everything all finished off in this episode here. That way we can call this project completed. But yeah, I did go quite a bit up. Uh, I did also reach 3 million stone mine, which is also a pretty big uh, spot there. Uh, but yeah, a couple of people. We got Fred and we got Rubik that did help Quite a bit we did have around about i want to say like 20 percent done i still left yesterday and the time recording this we finished that all in one day so there was a big section of uh you know stuff here that we still needed to be completed but we both all, all three of us grinded that out and finished that all so that way we can worry about making farms and decoration all of today so uh, yeah i'm going to continue grinding on with the farms here and then i think some other people might help we'll start continue with the decoration and maybe We'll see how it goes, and we'll then figure out what we want to do for the player user interface and things like that. Thank you. 
All right, so I believe everything is all good for the farms. As you can see, we're also working on the decoration here. Uh, but yeah, once this area is done, it's going to look really, really good. Because uh, we also themed, you know, everything inside this perimeter to fit with the decoration. Or you can say fit everything that's inside the perimeter with the or the decoration in with inside the perimeter. Uh, that way it all blends together really, really well. And if you can guess what it's really going to be, it's going to blend extremely well. Which is why I have this new uh, purple slime and honey texture pack that I created. So the only thing that really sticks out is the redstone blocks, and I'm fine with that. I don't really think I need to change that. I think colorful honey and slime uh, definitely does work as well. So we have the redstone line here, which is the on off switch for all of the farms. And then the crying obsidian one at the bottom is your item stream to take it up into this UI that I created here. So let's go check inside of that. So with this UI, because of the, how long the uh, processing is for the farms, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a lamp indicator here that way we could see just how far those clocks are, because we don't have a clock uh, inside this UI. We just looked it up to one of them that's right next to here. So with these, uh, with each farm here, there is a really long hopper clock that shoots an item from this dropper into this hopper. And that's kind of how it, you know, a, like a, almost a three hour clock within side of this small area right here. Uh, but yeah, so every time it shoots an item over, we then count to three with this little one right here. So this little circuit right here will count to three. I just used a, a hopper there because of the original schematic. I didn't want to have a single rail. This is why I did that. But uh, yeah, so this one, it'll pulse once, it'll go, this will be retracted, and then it'll push that over. Then the second pulse will come through. And then that will then pull the sticky piston back over. And then the third pulse, it'll push it up, which will then power this and it'll go from there. But then this will allow the item to go through. And we have a very, very old thing that I saw, um, but kind of works for my situation here. What this does is it has an item, a singular item in it. And then currently, especially by this computer right here, it is right there. And it will not move until this red line obviously unpowers, which this does right here. So once it's unpowered, it'll move to the next one. And then since this one are not locked, they will just go back to the start. And then, same time up here what we do is we push a redstone block over at the same time that will extend this sticky piston here which obviously will then take it out and we're subtracting single strength 15 by one each time so we got 15 14 and then so on so by default state it's at one which is not powering any lamps with this we can get a little uh, like progress bar that goes all the way up then once it reaches the end, it'll then reset and go back to zero. So that gives us a little a bit of a visual indicator how far the geo uh, farms are until their next harvest. That way we don't unload the chunks by accident uh, when it's just about the harvest or in the middle of harvesting. Uh, so yeah, that's a little stuff on night up. Probably not the best thing you could probably do, but it is functional uh, and, you know, it works. So... Basically, it's going to continue with that for now because obviously it works. But yeah, the rest of the UI, just mainly for storage on the two wings and then empty shulker box inputs uh, for the shulker box loaders on top. It's the on off switch down here, which just sends a flying machine down and then activates all of the redstone there. That way you can't just spam it and break all of the, the farms or the clocks. Uh, but yeah, so the shulker box go up there. Uh, we use a neat little uh, AND gate here. That way, if this one's filled, and even though there's going to be items inside of this dropper right here, this will still hard power the sticky piston. That way, it will not dispense more shulker boxes up there until they are needed. And then we just have two very, very simple 2x shulker box loaders up here, where the items just get sent in a loop until they are picked up. Should be plenty, because these farms are not fast at all, but the big harvest could have a lot of influx of items at once, which is why I also just did two of them as well just so that we can make sure we collect everything before it all despawns so yeah that's the ui here uh, very very simple the big thing is obviously that lamp indicator progress bar which definitely will help uh, for afk and over time as you can see how far uh, it'll be and of course if you unload the chunks or the player for this in our case the bot here if we don't have the bot there anymore and we want to run the farm again it'll still 
remember where it is uh, for the counter, and we won't need to reset anything like that. And we can still see. It says, you come back and say it's only like this halfway done. We know about like an hour and a half, two hours until the next harvest is. So it's really, really nice to have a indicator for that. So yeah, we're going to have, I, I basically just changed the amount of items in this right here for right now. So there's only one in here. Let me put the other 41 inside that hopper. So once this last one gets over, then the sequence to uh, start all the flying machines will go. That way we can see all the flying machines going off here. Then we can finish it off once we're done with the decoration. And we know everything is all good to go. I did also just add these uh, glass tubes here. That way we can guarantee everything gets picked up because some of them are actually really high compared to some of them are actually really, really low where you don't really need too much in casing. But yeah, all these link up to either this one on the right or this one on the left and transport the items all the way up. You can see this how nice this looks on the map with the uh, purple slime and honey. Everything's all purple and blends in really, really well even better once, of course, we get all of the wall decoration in as well. Enough rambling, let's click this button. You should see in the UI here, and this goes across. Once the flying machine, of course, goes down and turns them all on, we should see everything uh, go back. This, this is also a self-returning flying machine, so it will go back up and only will power it once. So we should see a lot of the farms. Actually, this one will go first. We should then see the progress bar go over. If I didn't, if I did it right, I didn't alter the state there, but all the top ones should be going down right now. One of the farms, the big one over here. It's another one that's also really, really nice to look at. Uh, but they are all going, which is good. And then once the top ones return, then one of the sides will go. Once those sides return, then the other side will go. So yeah, I just messed up this thing right here. I got to just add, uh, move the counter uh, twice. That way that's be reset. I didn't think about that because it's only going to power once. So we'll just manually do that. Lamps will go all the way across and then reset back to zero. This one is a really cool one here. It's a double geo. Um, they're really, really close together, so we couldn't really do too much in terms of harvest and everything, including, you know, the walls being here. So we had to use one big flying machine over there that harvests both of those geodes at once. So it does take a while to fully harvest this one, but it gets a huge amount compared to just using uh, two individual flying machines there. It's actually more efficient to use this build one big one than it would be to use, you know, the ones like these for both of those, which is kind of crazy to think about. But yeah, that should be everything harvested now. That was a actual full harvest. That's not going to happen often at all. You can see the huge influx of items right here. Uh, usually they're not going to be all that filled. That was, you know, I'm not leaving the farm there while building all this stuff up. That backup tends to happen. So yeah, this influx here is obviously not ideal. And not what's going to happen all the time. Let's see if so much is actually there. Don't want to break that one because that's a thing on it. There's actually uh, quite a bit of shards here. It doesn't help that I have all these shulker boxes in my inventory, but. Yeah, all the geo farms look like they worked. See, so it will eventually keep up. Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, it will eventually collect all that stuff there. It, that can handle uh, 
36,000 items an hour, and that is nowhere near 36,000 items. So they will be fairly fine. It just looks like a lot because they're all harvested at the same time. The uh, reason why I did that is just so that we're all synced up together and we know um, obviously how long it'll be till they all harvest instead of having you know, random intervals and things like that. Uh, I do have two full boxes just from the singular farm that we had while building here. So if you remember early in the or on in the project, we had a single farm. I think it was actually this one. There was this one right here that was built up early on. Um, and then we had we just had that run in while we were inside the perimeter. That way you can, you know, slowly get a little bit of shards. Um, because I thought these were really, really slow. But they actually aren't that bad. They're still really slow. Because uh, obviously it's like three hours for each harvest. But you can see this one. This one's not very high in the percentage for harvest at all. Um, but that's just kind of how it is, unfortunately, with most of them. Because of how they generate. This one's really, really high. Uh, that one over there obviously isn't. But big one over here. It's pretty decent. This one is really, really high for what it does. Obviously, there's a lot more that you couldn't really get. Um, but it is what it is with that. Yeah, it looks like all of them actually harvested. This one's pretty okay. Yeah, this big guy right here is pretty decent. I'm sure the size of it. Yeah, now that we have all those there, uh, it's just finishing off the decoration. So let's get back onto that, and we'll come back once everything is fully done. Alright, so everything here is done. As you can see, we have made some more progress on the farms themselves. This has been running for quite a few days now, as we have close to about 200,000 uh, amethyst shards here. So that's about 100,000 of the actual tinted glass that would be used for. Uh, obviously, we don't need that much because most farms don't need a lot, but some farms do need quite a bit of it. But yeah, everything here is done. Uh, wall decoration is all built up. And we have a lot of black concrete that was used for this decoration. Uh, but yeah, everything is all working. Also, it was really cool to actually see everything all tied together like it is right now. But uh, yeah, everything's all cleared up and working, which is obviously the main goal of any project. But it's all also decorated as well. And I do like how the, you know, it is a pretty simple decoration. As you can see, it's only... You know just the one block in depth but for the area that was mined out and what we needed it kind of uh needed to be done like that as you can see with this one over here i believe it is actually inside the wall so part of the decoration had to be switched out for of course the crying obsidian that way it doesn't get stuck to it and that flying machine actually does what it's supposed to do and fly uh, but yeah, you can't really see that from the outside which is actually the good thing so you don't really see that there is actually the crying obsidian there, which of course is the main goal to tie everything together. But yeah, I do like what I did with the actual uh, crying obsidian and the glass everywhere, because most of the time with these farms, they're all just in case and immovable blocks. So spend a little bit of extra time to only put the immovable blocks where they are needed. Definitely does make this area look a lot better than it otherwise would, especially with you know, the rewire of using the wallstone instead of the scaffolding and redstone dust everywhere the normal schematic does have. So it's pretty simple to adjust. Um, all you're doing is just making a wall like this and going down to the observer. You can actually move this forward one if you wanted to. Um, I realized that a bit too late after, you know, building all of them, you could have just moved it one closer. You needed to do that so you could do that if you want to do it yeah, if you want to do it just your own geo farm you see blocks on both sides and then the top one you only need block on the one side and then a trap door that is going to then stick to that wall no to then update all of them and you can have multiple of them on one layer like the scaffolding but this way they will all launch at the same time uh, because the wall stone is immediate unlike the scaffolding which is one tick per scaffolding so you can do that if you wanted to as well. That was just another thing that happened, but mainly it looks a lot cleaner with all the redstone up top rather than having to go down and it goes back up. There's really no need for that. This makes it look a lot cleaner. 
and you just have the same thing, just attach it with rail lines over into the next one, just like the other one did, but obviously it's a lot more cleaner than that. And with all this, we have, you know, the on off switches here, which then go there and then all the drops are then funneled to the center here uh, and then collected by shulker box leaders. And of course we have the UI with the uh, progress bar that I do absolutely love because it is a very huge help when, you know, knowing how far it is to the next harvest and it will work. Of course, if you stop the farm, it still it stays in the same spot uh, until the farm goes back on again, which is a huge, huge help. But yeah, everything is all done. If you wanted to get the, this uh, decoration, you can buy it on the Autocraft website, link in the description down below. Otherwise, make sure you like, subscribe, all those sorts of things, and I'll see you in the next one.